Hey everybody, I'm Bryce Machine Bates of Team Evil Geniuses, and this is a replay review brought to you by EvilGeniuses.net. Uh, today's replay is actually going to be a Zerg versus Terran, so let's go ahead and jump into the replay. All right, let's get this started. Speed it up through the beginning, just on times two. Um, <clears throat> this map is actually Ohana. A uh, pretty decent map for the matchup, allows for uh, sort of a, a lot of different counterattack pathways, especially once you're able to eliminate the destructible rocks uh, that is separating the natural and the third. And then even from, you know, into the third, there's this entrance, uh, the wide open pathway, there's an entrance from the fourth up here. Uh, but, you know, it's a really good map as far as like counterattacking. Uh, the sort of pillars in, in the center allow you to run around armies if you choose not to engage. So uh, this is a map where the sort of mutiling baneling style is kind of uh, making a comeback uh, in this matchup. Uh, but anyways, I go ahead, I'm starting my early drone scout, uh, 12, uh, yeah, 12 drone scout. Basically all this is looking for is a single refinery. If I see a refinery like this, I don't have to worry about T-Rex. If I don't, and I have to go ahead and scout, use this drone to try to find some sort of a proxy two racks uh, in order to be sure I can go ahead and hold my expansion. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and slow this down. So 15 hatchery, 15 pool, pretty standard opening here. Uh, 17 overlord. And this is sort of the uh, gasless expand that's becoming pretty popular. I think uh, Dongregu kind of popularized it. As long as you're able to go ahead, get early, uh, an early four queens out, defend, it really allows you to kind of uh, optimize your economy. Just using this drone to go scout for uh, sort of a bunker rush at the natural. Able, unable to see anything, obviously. Uh, it's not very common to go ahead and see a one racks bunker rush uh, after a refinery, but it does happen and it's something you have to prepare for. Transfer my five drones and the pool gets up, I can go ahead and start two queens. Now from here, uh, I'm starting f uh, probably four zerglings early on. These are really just to kind of scout out the watchtowers, pick off uh, any trailing marines like this that are just scouting out in the center of the map. So I immediately move out, notice a single marine to the left, decide to go engage it. It's actually meeting up with two other marines that are really just looking for overlords on the map right now. But lucky for me, I was able to uh, uh, scout our, around the edges with my overlords so they wouldn't be picked off on a map like this. And so we both choose to not engage. As soon as I scout the, the three marines, I, I realize uh, you can't really attack that with four zerglings. Meanwhile, as just as far as the build goes, I'm purely building drones um, up until the, the 36 supply mark. And this is actually uh, a pretty uncommon timing, or it's a timing that, that's uh, kind of making itself known lately. This is the Roach uh, Baneling timing only off of this gasless opening. Now that's actually, the only reason why it's so tricky is because it's off of gasless, and almost no one does it. You'll notice when like a Dong Regu opens the uh, Roach Baneling all in, he actually uh, always is off of 17 gas. So by not taking either gas, almost no Terran uh, in the current metagame is able to read this timing. So he goes in, scouts with his SCV, scouts gasless, and then just assumes it's early gasless expand. So as soon as my Vespian geysers get up, uh, I go ahead, put down, put down a roach horn inside the main. Uh, unfortunately, well fortunately he gets two Hellions in, but I'm able to trap them off, and he did not scout the roach horn. So from here, I, I lose a, about three drones, and I'm able to kill off the Hellions. Now, if anything, this is better for me because he thought he was able to go inside, scout everything, and was actually unable to, and has no idea about this current uh, timing push. As the Roach Warren completes, I start my Baneling Nest. There's actually no uh, Speedling with this timing. It's purely just going to be Roaches and Banelings. So uh, you can rally in a bunch of slow Zerglings, morph them into Banelings, and engage. And it works extremely well against any sort of opening that doesn't have a siege tank um, or you know, isn't walled off properly and definitely against this early third command center, which is becoming pretty common. So as you'll see here, I have about 38 harvesters. Um, already started my roach production. If you look at the production tab here, I have three more on the way. And then other than these early roaches, I'm just going to be rallying in those slow zerglings. 
um, just to go ahead and build into banelings, break bunkers, walls, get inside SCV lines. And as we see here, he's purely off of just a single starport, a barracks, a uh, factory. You know, not very uncommon actually for the current metagame. The Terrans are playing extremely greedy, so this is more just a way to go ahead and punish your opponent for playing uh, pretty greedy like this. So he scouted out with those Hellions. Now he recognizes exactly what's about to happen. Uh, rallying those slow Zerglings, as I said before, morph them into Banes, and as soon as these all complete, I'm just going to uh, engage. But notice this isn't actually all in. I'm starting up drone production once again. I don't have my layer tech, but I have an evolution chamber. I've started my third, so I have uh, sort of backup options for this. Anyways, I'm able to go ahead, uh, kill the bunker. I want to try to target the banelings inside the mineral line. Uh, he's forced to retreat up into his main, pick up his hellions, and I quit and start trying to break down this wall. He did a good job of focusing down the banelings uh, with his early viking. And the supply depot falls, but notice I probably could just end it right now, but I chose not, or opted not to really play too risky, uh, and follow up just by having an early expansion, droning up, uh, and because I knew that these roaches would do the damage I needed them to, as long as uh, he did the build that I uh, was assuming he was doing what he was, like the early third command center, uh, and then no, no sort of tank play, and even if they do open tank um, with early siege, you can defend it, or they can defend it, and you can just fall back. Uh, and you're really in a reasonable situation then uh, and play from. And anyways, so now my third's up, I'm trying to saturate that. Use some zerglings to go ahead, uh, kill these destructible rocks, focusing on creep spread. Layer's almost complete, macro hatchery. And second, Evolution Chamber. It's really important to get the armor and melee upgrades, especially in this matchup. Uh, Zerglings are sort of your, your the unit that takes precedence over everything else, just because they're so cost-effective against the typical biocentric armies uh, of like Marines, Marauder, Medivac. And as we see here, uh, yeah, I go ahead and transfer my spine crawler that was at my natural defending into my main. This is something that's very uncommon, but you basically want to uh, get the most efficiency out of your uh, structures and units as possible. And at this point in the game, when I have this much creep spread, uh, zerglings scouting around the map, I'm not really worried about uh, any typical engage engagements from the uh, natural. And if they're attacking with their entire army, one spine crawler is going to really help you anyway. So it's always a good idea to pull that spine crawler into your main to help defend against uh, these early drops. So uh, pretty close, or pretty soon I should be taking my fourth. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to uh, scout this drop inside my main. Once again, that spine crawler is able to start picking away at those hellions, uh, give me positioning. He doesn't want to really keep engaging this and I fend off the Hellions without too big of an issue. I've started my uh, pathogen gland upgrade, and on this map in particular, I typically like to open uh, Ultralisks, even though Broodlords work just as well. Uh, the reasoning why I open Ultralisks typically here is because other than these two pillars, the middle tends to be pretty wide open, and the problem with Broodlords is mobility. Uh, and on a big map like this with tons of different counterattack pathways, it's very easy for them to ignore the Broodlords and go for base trade scenarios, which can get pretty sloppy. So I, I choose to avoid those if possible. Started my lair, uh, started Baneling speed. It's always really good to add in a few Banelings uh, with your late game composition, especially uh, I think with Ultralis. Having the three sources of AoE, uh, Banelings, uh, Fungal Growth from Infestors, and Ultra Splash uh, really just kind of melts bios, even this uh, sort of Marauder-centric bio. So he's scouted, I, I've gone this Infestor play and chose to add in Marauders. It's a, a pretty uh, common decision now. Marauders are very good at tanking the Fungal, the, the Banelings, uh, and really just kind of giving your Marines a shot at uh, being able to, to do some damage getting there and, and be the sort of DD of the group. 
I have my infester production up, my core face is up, both the extractors complete. And now I'm just working myself to hive. Hive's completed. Uh, I'm getting the uh, adrenaline gland upgrades for zerglings. And it just makes them basically attack 20% faster. It's always a, a good upgrade to get, especially, as I said before, with these uh, sort of ling-centric armies. And right now I'm just working on having map control, spreading creep, uh, engaging any little armies that are looking to go ahead uh, and, and scout out on the map, maybe prevent creep spread. Because I really want to spread this creep as, as quickly as possible. It's going to allow myself a lot better movement. And if I can spread it just far enough, I can actually use it to go ahead and block expansions. Like you see this burrowed zergling here blocking his fourth, so I know exactly when he takes it. Um, see a drop down here, gets cleaned up on the wall. And really, I'm just kind of holding off and fending off these drops until my ultras uh, start, uh, or my ultras complete. I really need to wait for this uh, chitinous plating and then start my 5 3. And Ultralists, once they have five armor, are extremely efficient against biocentric armies. I really need to, or it makes it very difficult for him to go to deal with. You'll actually see a lot of Terran players late game now mixing in Thors against uh, Ultralists uh, armies. Well, basically just uh, tier three Zerg armies in general because Thors are still pretty decent against Broodlords if they're repaired as well. And so let's go ahead and speed this up some. Really just waiting for those Ultralist production. And as we see here, nine Ultralists in production. Still just spreading my creep, clearing out his units, defending these drops. And just by having these uh, spine crawlers at each base, it really just, they're here just to kind of buy me time. Uh, it allows me time to go get units over without taking too much damage, too many casualties to my mineral line. So I have my Ultralists, not quite 5-3. I choose to engage anyway. And throwing infested towns on top of the siege tanks. I really just want to eliminate the siege tank count however possible. And then once it starts getting inefficient, I can go ahead and fall back. Just got this third, or fourth rather. I'm able to kill that off. Throw another Zergling uh, right where the command center goes. It's really just forcing extra, extra scans, which uh, I always like. So, you know, it's just a, a good way to sort of pull yourself uh, back into the game. And you'll notice here, I started two spires. It's extremely important uh, late game, especially you know once I, I recognize that that attack didn't quite go as well for me as it could have, that you start forcing Terran into check switches. Because particularly in ZVT, it's a lot easier for Zerg to hit a tech change than for Terran. Say I wanted to just start up uh, 20 Broodlords or so, I just can make 20 Corruptors morph them into Broodlords, whereas if he wants to change his army from you know, bio to mech or be extremely Thor heavy, he has to start throwing down more and more production facilities. And also, their production facilities cost uh, a lot more than Zergs. They, they uh, cost Vespian, especially if, you know, like I said, they, they want to exchange and switch to sort of a Thor-centric army. Um, and also, I can stack larvae, whereas they have to queue up units one at a time, from, well, other than the reactor uh, you know, add-ons on like barracks and such. It's typically one unit at a time per base. So now, I've maxed out once again on this uh, ultra-centric army. I need to go try to hit one more engagement. And now I also have, or pretty soon I'll have my 5-3. So that's probably what I'm waiting for. And then I'm probably going to uh, transition to Broodlords from here. Started my air armor upgrade. Armor is al always better with Broodlords. You typically just want to try to keep them alive. And then the Broodlings will eventually be uh, you know, very cost effective. So I'm able to scout out this base. He scans, has to kill another Zergling. So that's another scan wasted. And then I force him to pick it up once again. 5-3 is complete. Now I choose to engage, trying to hit basically all the fungus on the, uh, the biomass. So I over here, yeah. over here, over here. Yeah. Either way, I'm dropped uh, about 60 supply here. I realize that attacking into these sort of siege tank lines isn't going to be too effective with Ultralis anymore. And I was able to clean up all these siege tanks. 
Not sure if I get this. Oh, looks like I might actually. That choice is pretty good. And then, notice my production tab, 12 corruptors, 46 servings. Uh, I'm definitely going to hit a uh, tech switch here. I recognize his rally coming in. I'm probably just going to run away with his ultra risks. And then regroup with my corruptors. Here we go. I've all completed production. And a couple more infestors because all my infestors are pretty much out of energy. But by the time these corruptors morph to broodlords, they should you know, at least get one more fungal each. And he is not prepared for this tech switch. You'll notice he has a single starport with a reactor, no Vikings producing out of it. And other than that, he, you know, especially with the Marauder tank-centric army, none of that shoots the air. You know, it's, it's all down to this, these handful of Marines to try to pick off uh, you know, 10, 12 broodlords. And then as long as I hit my fungals correctly, there's nothing he can really do to sort of fend it off. So I'm pretty sure I, I know he has this base. You'll notice I'm moving over there. I end up catching a, <coughs> or a, a Viking, which is obviously with the type of army I have right now, it's extremely important. And then I'm just rallying in corruptors to deal with any sort of Viking play. He's doing a good job of uh, canceling this expansion over here, trying to re limit my base count to four, but it's not really enough for him. Now I can go ahead and engage with my Broodlords. He recognizes he's definitely at a tech disadvantage. Oh, he's got two more starports here, I didn't see. And now he's starting up all his Viking production, but it's just too little too late. He's lost to you know one of his last mining bases. And he just really doesn't have the composition to deal with this. As soon as the Broodlords engage the siege tanks, uh, everything's just going to crumble pretty much. So, hold everything back. I really just want to lead with the Broodlords. They have the longest range of any unit of mine. If I were to lead with the Ultralis and then follow with the Broodlords, I could potentially lose Ultralis. Whereas here, everything I, I'm killing and engaging is cost effective. Now, he has some pretty decent little micro here with these uh, Vikings. He's just d doing a good job of dodging my fungals. And they outrange my corruptors, so I'm forced to just do this little dance back and forth. One fungal goes down, looks like two go down, and I can finally just engage the, the Vikings. I run uh, in here with my Ultralis, my Broodlords, and there's nothing he can really do to hold this base. Still throwing in some Vikings, but it's not really going to be enough. This isn't even a planetary, so this will definitely fall. Meanwhile, still just actually tech switching once again to Ultralis because I realized how many uh, Vikings he had in production. So it's really, you know, like I said, it's re you really want to try to just continually tech switch back and forth. Notice the tech lab uh, barracks are only making Marines now. So that's not enough to compensate for these Ultralis that are coming in. Whereas, like, Marauders definitely would have been better in this situation, at least a few. GG. All right, guys, thank you very much. Once again, I'm Bryce Machine Bates of Team Evil Geniuses, and this has been a replay review brought to you by EvilGeniuses.net. Uh, if you like this, you can check this and more out from uh, our EG crew at EvilGeniuses.net. Take care.